Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to hook up this logic analyzer to the hero sensor so we can connect it to the computer and capture some data. So I'm gonna go ahead and solder these four wires in to, to the hero sensor and then we'll be right back. All right, so we have all our wires hooked up to the board. Um, here's the software. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that we have sampling rate set, uh, have it set pretty high just because we don't know what kind of signals we're going to get. Uh, duration, I don't want that much. I just want to capture the boot up sequence and then we'll do a separate capture of the data. So I'm going to leave that at three seconds. We have four channels. And then we'll go ahead and switch to the trigger setup, which I have set up to up trigger. And then we will, we don't want any analyzer right now. We just want to see what the four data sets are doing. And then we're going to press start. But before we press start, we'll hook up the power and we're going to trigger when the power turns on, uh, on channel zero. So we're going to go ahead and press start, waiting for trigger, turning on the output. And there you go, we're sampling. Okay, so we did get some data here and we got a lot of data actually. <laughs> so let's look at the, let's look at the data a little bit so we can figure out what all these signals probably mean. So by zooming in here, uh, we can see that the first one does transition, but not as much as the others. So this must be some kind of a control signal. The second one and the third one look like data and the fourth one looks like clock. So this is most definitely an SPI signal. So we're going to go ahead and add an analyzer for SPI. Channel zero is going to be our enable pin. Channel one and two are gonna be data, so we don't know which one is which yet. So we're just gonna select and clock is that last one. And these we don't know yet. Let's go ahead and hit save. And yes, we do get some data here, so that's good. Uh, let's just make sure that the rest of the settings make sense. Now it is complaining about something here. If we click on the analyzer, edit settings, we can see that the clock is low when inactive. And that's clearly not true because it's always high. So we're going to switch that. And that makes that problem go away. And then the secondly, we just want to make sure that we are sampling this data at the right time. Um, and if we look here, we can see that the data is changing when the clock is transitioning to the low so it must so we need to sample when we're actually on the upside so we want to change that so edit settings we're gonna clock is high data is valid on clock leading it we'll switch that to trailing save and there you go changes so every time it's going up it's going to sample cleanly on what the data is doing now the last thing is trying to figure out which one is the the master and which one is the slave, which is going to be hard to do right now because we don't know how to tell that. But uh, let's just change that to hex. And here you can see that we are getting data on both sides. We don't know which one's master and which one's slave, but just by looking at this, it does look like the top one is master because it's like sending all this data out and then it's collecting it back and we're not moving the mouse. So this these zeros must mean no movement. We're gonna go ahead and save this as boot. And then we'll do another trigger while I'm moving the mouse. So in a known pattern, like up and down, left and right. So we can see what moving the mouse does to the data. So we're just gonna hit start again. This time the power is already on, so I'm not going to hit start yet. I wanna make sure that I have the mouse in my hand. I'm gonna move it in a known position, as you can see, it is reacting on my computer here, which is funny, but let's press start. And then I'm gonna move it up and down, left and right. Okay. And this way, when we go to look at the data on the computer, at least we'll be able to see some changes and just zooming in, making sure. And here you can see a little bit different. So we are getting no more all zeros. We're getting some data here, which is really cool. It'll be fun to figure out what all this data means. So let's go ahead and export and we're going to save it as moving.csv uh, so we can differentiate. So we're going to press save and yes, we do want to replace it. And yeah, there you go. So we'll be uh, exporting this into an Excel sheet and we'll be right back. Thank you. 